I invented this word technocalypse to describe what seemed to me a process that I could observe around me. Technocalypse, meaning the convergence of two seemingly unrelated things, the apocalyptic imagination, which has been around for centuries, and the rise of modern technology. And the connection seems to be this. The apocalyptic imagination is based on one fundamental idea, and that is that human life on Earth, and Earth itself, very ex all existence is going to be transformed through the influence of a divine intervention. Now that idea seems to be deeply rooted in human consciousness, but what is interesting is that we now have the technology to translate some of those fundamental dreams, those octopal visions of the human species into reality. The difference, of course, is that it is we human beings that are transforming the earth and transforming ourselves. That's the surprise of history, that a vision that began as a prophetic and religious vision now seems to be in the process of being appropriated by humanity itself. And that convergence is what I mean by technocalypse. Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Edwin Buzz Aldrin. Three men to represent the culmination of a dream and the beginning of a new concept of reality. I look at space exploration, artificial intelligence, nuclear weapons, cyberspace, and genetic engineering as all essentially religious projects. I spent some weeks at the archives in NASA where the archivist had, simply out of his own interest, collected a great volume of documents about religion, and no one had ever looked at it before. And as I was reading it, I got more and more terrified, really, because uh, the, the otherworldly aspect of the space program, uh, the, the uh, let's say, divine pretensions, The origins of manned spaceflight in Russia, it goes back to Tsiolkovsky, who preached that it was mankind's destiny to dominate the cosmos and become reunited with God, and that space exploration uh, was the means to that end. And he was really the father of modern rocketry. In the United States, uh, von Braun, the Nazi rocket scientist who was brought here, he became a born-again Christian. And he argued that human beings must go into space as part of their cosmic destiny to spread the gospel. So they rose through the atmosphere toward the open vacuum, a journey that was to be a door to the future and a window on the past. The first manned space flight, which later became Mercury, was originally called Project Atom. And then when NASA was set up in 1957, it was, the name was changed. In fact, in Huntsville, it was always called Project Mercury, and then parentheses, Adam. When Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong were waiting on the moon before Armstrong stepped out onto the moon to take mankind's first steps on another celestial body, Buzz Aldrin, who was a Catholic, had prepared a little box with communion wafers and blessed wine that his priest had blessed for him and he actually said to NASA Control could we have a moment's silence so that he could take communion wafers and communion wine before Armstrong stepped out on the moon and it's interesting to note that the first food and drink ever taken on the moon was communion wafers and wine and the NASA hierarchy were completely um, encouraging of this kind of thing. The astronauts have carried literally thousands of Christian banners, flags, microfilm, copies of the Bible, etc., into space with them in their spacesuits. So the religious ethos of the space program, I think, is undeniable. So they went about their tasks of exploration, aliens on a distant world. And strangely enough, they looked as if they belonged there. The Human Genome Project, which is the largest technological enterprise of, of our day, 
Francis Collins, who runs it, is a born-again a Christian and evangelical, very outspoken, who has written that he thinks the most important event in history is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says that he will allow for God to intervene in the laws of nature, etc. The human genome uh, doesn't really exist because everyone's genome is different. And when asked whose genome it would be, uh, they said, well, it would be sort of a um, composite. And uh, it would be male. And they said it would be sort of an atom too. Richard Seed, who announced rather defiantly that he was going to clone human beings, went on to the radio and the television, and this is what he said. And I have a tape of this. He said to the whole world, God made man in his own image. God intended for man to become one with God. We are going to become one with God. Cloning and the reprogramming of DNA is the first serious step in becoming one with God. Yes, we are going to become gods. Period. Technological development, which appears to be the most worldly of activities, is in actuality an otherworldly project rooted in the Christian notion of uh, redemption, uh, the restoration of original perfection. And the story, which is a peculiar Christian one, is the story of the fall of Adam and the, the promise of a recovery of Adam's original divinity. Science is the ultimate authority in our culture, and scientists cultivate the image that they stand between mortals and God and that they are the new clergy, so to speak. The notion that science and religion were enemies is really a historical myth. In fact, for most of our history, science and religion have been intimately entwined. The first time you have a really major separation between science and religion is when Darwin put forward his thesis that man was descended from apes and not made in the image of God. That caused a huge tension between science and religion. And in the late 19th century, a mythology was in fact created that science and religion had always been at war, which in fact is a historical myth. So why not get it all out on the table? Okay, you want to pursue genetic engineering because human beings, as the image likeness of the God, have the right to create new species, transgenic species, participate in creation, a new creation, a, a second genesis. That's our birthright. That, that's what was promised to Adam. Okay, if that's true, if that's what we're about, let's say that's what we're doing. Okay, and stop all this talk about, oh, this is, we're doing this for medical reasons. Okay. The Industrial Revolution took place in the Christian West, so it's not surprising that most religious theories trying to deal with these changes are rooted in the Christian tradition. But now that the whole world is confronted with modern technology, people within other traditions also seek answers to the implications of modernity and how to reconcile technology with their own beliefs. Their reflections might give us an idea about how the world would react to the prospect of a transhuman future. To thee, the data, the code, the communications, forever, amen. <laughs>